Now, Truth, the Hoover Institution Annual Monetary Policy Conference, which has become quite a deal, right? Eight, have to back to the whole committee. You guys could take a vote in there on interest rates now yeah, if you wanted a to. A lot of people listening to this And it would stand. Exactly. Uh, Loretta, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's talk about uh, the jobs report this morning. 260 plus thousand jobs created. Are, are you ready to go raise rates because the economy is running so hot? No, I, you know, I fully support our patient approach to looking at what the data is telling us as it comes in. The job market is strong and the, today's report just reinforces that the, we have a strong labor market, which is great. Uh, we have inflation a little bit below our target, but stable prices. We have um, productivity growth growing, which is a good positive for the economy. And growth is, came in in the first quarter a little bit stronger than people had anticipated. Now, grant you, some of that was inventory building, so we'll have to look to see what it, what it implies for the second quarter. But growth is good. So I think we're in a really good place. Our interest rate policy, I think, is exactly appropriate for now. And we'll just see how the economy evolves. 3.6 percent unemployment. Do you worry that the account, that the employment market is too tight? No, I think we have to take on the ground. You know, we don't see inflationary pressures building. Um, we do see people getting back to work. Um, labor force participation is growing over time, although it was down a little bit in this last report. Um, people are working. Wages are not accelerating, but they're growing. So that's a good thing. They're growing in line with productivity growth. So this is a strong economy. It's a, it's, these are good numbers. Can you put a little more detail on that when you say growing in line? Because uh, Vice Chairman Clarida said that today as well. 3.2% um, is in line more or less with recent productivity numbers or whatever. As long as it's not above what the combined productivity and inflation, you don't worry that that pushes inflation up higher. Yeah, because what usually you see in the longer run that wages are going to be going with productivity growth and inflation. Right. As long as it doesn't go above that, then there's no real feed so, through to price inflation. So I can factor in in the future if it's 4%, that's still okay, as long as it's still below those two numbers. Yeah, as long as, well, productivity right? growth rising right. is a good thing for the economy, right? Do you see the recent decline, President Mester, of... Um, uh, in the core inflation numbers as being transitory or something to worry about? There's good reason to think that some of that weakness is transitory. So again, you don't want to overreact to one report. Um, I do think that we have to take seriously our 2% inflation goal um, and work to try to get inflation back to our goal over time. But I also agree that we need to be patient about it and we need to look at the data and underlying data to understand what's going on. I would be concerned if inflation and expectations were falling, if aggregate demand was falling, if the signal of low inflation was that growth was, was going down. But there's no evidence of that. The economy is in a really strong place. So I'm willing to be patient right, on, on the inflation on the downside as well as inflation on the upside. Does patient mean you want to do something eventually? But do you have an idea of where you'd like policy to go? Would no, you I, be? I, I honestly think that we're in a good, we're well calibrated right now. And of course, in, so you don't we want always 3%. have to be, we always have to be forward looking. Right. But it's got to be based on where we think the economy is going. But you would not prefer, for example, there were some people who had a neutral rate of 3%. You would not prefer to get there, but you're just patient in getting there. No, because as you know, and what, uh, uh, Clarita talked about today was that those numbers are measured with a lot of confidence bands around them. Right. So they're estimates. And so you always have to be taking the signals from the market, signals from the real economy, signals from the price data to calibrate where your policy is. We're about at a neutral rate because we can see that in the economy. We don't have building up inflationary pressures. We have strong labor markets. We have growth a little bit above trend. And that's a good economy to be so in. So that growth being above trend is interesting. Um, uh, we did 3% last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a surprise 3% in the first quarter, but there's some stuff in there. Right. What's your best guess for what we do this year? Yeah, so I'm, a, I'm at a, between 2 and 2.5%. Two and um, the first quarter came in a little bit stronger than I thought it uh -huh. was going to, so I'm probably in the upper part of that range so now. So towards 2.5? Yeah, probably in the, t yeah, I would say. Is the risk to the upside or the downside, would you I say? I think it's balanced growth? right now. I think there's good reason to think that some of the upside, if, you know, some of the uncertainty on trade comes off, that would be an upside surprise. So, uh, you know, I'm seeing balance risks out there. How about the global risks that are out there? Uh, Chairman Powell talked yesterday on Wednesday mm -hmm. about the, that some of that has subsided. Do you have less concern now about what's happening in Europe? I think some of it has China? subsided. We do have some po more positive numbers after ch out of China. Brexit was postponed, so that was an uncertainty um, there, postponed. But again, I think we have to watch the data. We have to see how it's going in Europe. Um, there are weaker numbers coming in on certain parts of Europe and stronger numbers than another. It's just basically we're in this sort of monitoring the economy now.